Welcome back to TV viewers, Chris Nichols here, and today we're going to be wandering around downtown Calgary with the brand new pre-production Fuji X100V. And uh, I think what we're going to do is a slightly different approach. You know, we often try to throw a lot of information at you, all the specs, all the information, but a lot of that you already know or you can find on deepyearview.com and I think it'd be more valuable in a video context if we just talk about the things that really are appealing to us, how we're shooting the camera, the features that really stand out, positive or negative. I also want you to know that Jordan's going to be shooting the entire episode on an X100V as well, so I hope you like the 35 millimeter focal length and he will be testing all day the autofocus capabilities of the X100V, so look out for that as well. All right, so as you can see behind us, there's the First Nations Princess mural that we shot before when we did the X-Pro3 video. And I shot it again because you know what, it's a cool mural, the colors are beautiful, the light's really nice on it right now. But it also brings up a good point about some of the similarities between the X100 V and the X Pro 3. We have the same 26 megapixel sensor, we have the same color modes, you know, the Eterna, the monochrome with all the toning and grain size, a uh, classic neg. We have the same eye detect capability with the autofocus, that's a nice upgrade. And when it comes to the actual viewfinder itself, we also have a very similar arrangement. 0.52 magnification optical viewfinder, of course, with all the digital accoutrements that come with that. And then you do have a 3.69 million dot EVF. Now, as much as all the other improvements to this camera make it a more enjoyable experience, the real winner here is a brand new lens. This is a 23 millimeter F2 version two. It says it right there. It's really, really cool. And uh, you know, the reason why this is so significant, we've been using the same 23 millimeter F2 lens on all the X100 cameras since forever, okay? And this lens was not perfect. It was quite soft close up and the corner performance wide open left something to be desired. So we took some shots here first close up, a classic Canadian crown royal left behind and you can already notice a huge improvement. Now it's the same 10 centimeter minimum focusing distance, but the version two lens is much sharper wide open. I did some shots here, stopped down to 5.6, and you can clearly see an improvement. We've also seen big improvements to the corner sharpness here wide open. So Fuji's really made the F2 aperture on this lens far more usable than it ever was on the older lens. And again, you can see samples here, focusing in the center, and then focusing in the corners, we are getting that nice improvement compared to the old lens. And so the improvements in the sharpness, especially close up, are real serious improvements, and we're glad to see that. Now the city of Calgary has built this beautiful aluminum structure which is, I'm assuming, made for us because it's an ideal locate test. So I shot the new 23mm lens here at f2 wide open just to have a look at it there. And really you can see a bit of magenta in the foreground, a little bit of sort of cyan green blue in the background. but. You know, for the most part, pretty well controlled. Uh, otherwise, I, you know, it is so bright that trying to get that shot, I was maxing out the mechanical shutter speed of 2,000th of a second. Now, I could go to an electronic shutter, but what's really nice about the X100V is they've upgraded the ND that's built into this lens. It's from three stops, now four stops in strength, and that let me get the shot wide open in bright sunlight. So stopped all the way down to f16, honestly the sun stars in this lens aren't blowing me away, they're kind of messy and shooting wide open into the sun you can see that we are getting a fair amount of flare, some ghosts at the bottom of the frame as well as you can see here, so you know, maybe not the greatest strength of this particular lens. It's a good thing to improve the f2 characteristics on this lens because you're going to want to shoot it there quite a bit. Bokeh on this lens wide open is beautiful. Less mechanical vignetting than I thought it would have in the corners. Nice clean bokeh, uh, you know, the whole rendition is good. And then when you stop the lens down it gets even better. I really actually like the fall off and the rendering from near to far with this lens throughout the whole range. 
Now, by far, one of the features that we're most excited about in the X100V is that it is weather sealed. Now, this is a really interesting concept because it makes a lot of sense on a compact, travel, pocketable camera like this. In fact, there's a lot of times where I might not even bring a camera bag. I can very easily fit this in my jacket pocket, walk around, and if the weather's not great, I don't have to worry about it too much. However, there are some issues you do have to keep in mind. The front of the lens where it focuses in and out, that cannot be sealed, unfortunately. So, although you do get to use all the same accessories like the wide angle converter, the teleconverter, the lens hood adapter, you know, filters all from the older X100 series, you do have to put those on there to complete that seal. So at least a UV filter in front or one of the converters and then the camera will be very rugged. You know, for years manufacturers have been telling us that you cannot have a tilt screen on small cameras because they're going to be either too bulky or it wrecks the weather ceiling. And that's just straight out bull because Fuji did it here on the X100V. Look at this thing. Yes, it's sharper, but more importantly, this two-way tilt is just built on such a thin mount and I really like that because it does keep the camera nice and slim and compact and it is still weather sealed despite that. Now this is a full touchscreen interface and I can have the camera up to my eye and use the AF touchpad. I really like that as well. So we just celebrated the Lunar New Year here in Calgary. And so first off, I guess to our Chinese viewers, I'll say uh, fa choi or si fa tsai to whoever you know is, is celebrating that here with us. But uh, it was a really nice event. I took my daughter down to downtown Calgary and it was a crazy crowd, very hard to get a view. So she's up on my shoulders and I had the camera up here. And the first thing I wanna say is this touchscreen uh, interface was really nice with the tilt. I could easily see and shoot over a crowd. But the other thing I really appreciate actually is the new grip here. It's just slightly modern from the X100F and although it seems quite slim I actually got a very positive feel on it I've been doing a lot of one-handed shooting today I was doing a lot of one-handed shooting that day and I never felt like I was gonna drop the camera or slip it I also like the position of the EEL AFL button and I customized that of course for autofocus on although you could absolutely use the back button press on the dial itself as well now the lack of a D-pad on the X100V is going to polarize a lot of users. Some of this can be replicated using the custom buttons or using the touchscreen interface, but frankly the touchscreen interface, I never like the swipe directions to make things happen. Regardless, some people won't even care that this is missing and other people this might be a deal breaker. So this time around we actually paid with the HDR Plus mode. We forgot to do that with the Fuji X Pro 3. This works a lot like a smartphone and how it's going to composite images in camera to extend your dynamic range. So basically the Fuji X100V handheld takes three photos very quickly, composites them together. You know, it's basically like bracketing exposure on your computer but all done in camera. I like that we still get a raw file that we can work with afterwards. It applies the tone curve based on the original exposure comp and an intention that I had in the first place and as you can see here it actually does a really really nice job. I love having all the Fuji simulation modes but I really wish I could customize my own menu to just have the film simulation modes that I like to use because now we have quite a big menu to cycle through to choose what we want. The other thing, and I complained about this on the X-Pro3 as well, if I am doing color toning, for example, in the black and white mode, and it gives me my color field, I wish I could just touch on different areas of the field rather than having to scale up and scale down and scale left and scale right with the joystick. It's just too slow. Brand new ISO control, I love it. You know, instead of that spring-loaded one where you have to pull it up, hold it, and you can only turn it so far before you have to let it go, pull it up again, move, let it go, pull it up again. This thing, I just click up, I can quickly twist to whatever ISO I want, pop it back down, brilliant. So it turns out the X100V has some interesting video features, so you can all listen to Jordan talk now. Jordan here to talk about using the X100V for video, and you know what, this is actually a poorly thought out test. This is not a vlogging camera. We have no IBIS, a 35 millimeter lens is not terribly wide. And on top of that, we don't have a fully articulating screen so I can see what I'm shooting. Also, it's kind of chilly, so let's go inside. Ah, this is much better. You know, the X100 series have never really been known as a great video option, but I was kind of shocked how few things were pulled off of the X100V. It's basically everything you got from the X Pro 3. Now we get 4K recording, although unfortunately there is a 10 minute per clip record limit, but we get the Eterna profile, we get F-Log if we want to do some heavy grading, and we also get Fuji's excellent slow motion recording at 120 frames per second. I really liked the quality they have whenever they're using their 26 megapixel x trans sensor. Now looking at the side of the camera, it doesn't look very promising for video shooters. However, the 2.5 millimeter mic jack can be adapted to a 3.5 mil for most standard microphones, as well the USB-C can be adapted as a headphone jack as well with an adapter. 
And unlike the X Pro 3, we do get an HDMI output. Now it's just a micro, so it will inevitably break at some point. But out of this, you can get a 10-bit 422 signal if you want to send it out to an external recorder. Yes, it looks silly, but it's nice to have the option. Now my biggest issue with the X100V for video is that it has a wonderful force stop filter built right into the lens, but for some reason it's only available in stills, and I still haven't gotten an explanation from Fuji as to why this might be. So it does mean you've got to grab the lens adapter, screw ND filters on it, it is a pretty clunky solution. So yes, there are some small issues for video, but I am floored by how capable this camera is. I can't believe it was something that I shot an episode with, and it pretty quickly became invisible. I actually didn't mind the process at all. So if you need a small travel camera and you're serious about video, I would definitely take a real long look at the Fuji X100V. You know, the X100 series of cameras have always been a camera series that are universally loved. Everybody asks, it's like, oh, it's a beautiful camera, I loved it, and I personally never really enjoyed using them. I appreciated what they were trying to be, but it just was never really a camera that I had a good time with. And I have to say, the X100V is probably the first time I've really, truly enjoyed this camera. There's not a lot bad to say about it, to be honest. I mean, they improved all the things that needed improving. The autofocus capabilities are fantastic with the eye detect. Of course, the new upgraded sensor, the lens has been improved in a big way, and I think the weather ceiling is actually going to be a really interesting feature to have for a camera like this. And I can see this being an awesome travel camera, street photography camera, and I realize that you know I, I have the maturity to say that the focal length here, I'm in the vast minority of people who don't enjoy using it. 35 equivalent lenses, Jordan, they're just never wide enough or never tight enough. Like, story of my life. Everybody else is going to love it, so I highly recommend this camera. I think you'll really enjoy it. Now the last thing that I want to bring up is that the X100V actually becomes a very interesting counterpoint to the Fuji X Pro 3 because there's a lot of interesting features that are brought straight over. I mean the Fuji simulation modes, you know, all the new stuff. I, I really do actually like the classic Neg. I use it quite a bit. Uh, things like the, uh, the quick menu tiles that you can customize. That's a great bonus. I really like that too. And you know, of course, this OVF, EVF business is very similar. If you want to use the OVF, I think that's an awesome novelty, it's an interesting tool. If you want to play with it, I personally just going to keep it on EVF, especially now that it's the improved EVF. But really, this is such a similar camera to the X-Pro3, except of course that you have a fixed lens. I do like this tilt screen way better than the new thing that they tried on the X-Pro3. So really, I think if you're looking at a small compact travel camera and you don't need interchangeable lenses, this actually represents a very interesting camera choice compared to that.